Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well. Happy World Book Day. Um, I decided I was going to come on here today and just sort of talk to you about some of the books that have shaped my reading since I was a child and talk about them and a lot of them are my favourite authors now. So I just thought I would come on and let you see kind of where where my reading has gone, has developed from. I can vividly remember my parents reading to me when I was like a tiny tot and you know things progressed from there and one of the first kind of books that I can remember trying to help read was Mrs Pepperpot. Um, there was this one, Mrs Pepperpot to the Rescue. This is by Alf Prozen. I love these stories. This is about a little, la little old lady who shrinks and has lots of fun adventures. So I can remember, so as I say, being read Mrs Pepperpot. The other, so in this sort of age group bracket, I would remember being read were Br'er Rabbit. Uh, I can remember Miss Miss Tiggy Winkle and things like that. I know I remembered. I remember some of those. From there, we went on to a much beloved series for me, and that's the Sula series by Lavinia Derwin. This is about a young boy called Magnus, who would rather do anything than be in school. He would rather. He's got a fantastic art ability, and he also loves to play his his flute to the seals he lives in a remote scottish island and it was just beautifully written i remember being enthralled by magnus and everything that was happening to him and i can you know still remember my dad reading this to me um there were four books in the quartet and so from the from sort of kind of from sula we also went on to things like the secret seven famous five things like that so that as i was beginning to learn to read and could read for myself what we would do is like mum and dad would read a wee bit and then I would read to them so yes we this is much much loved then I progressed to The Shally School by Eleanor M. Brent Dyer this series was written way back in the 1920s um, and there are you know I think there's something like 68 books in the series plus people have now started writing fill-ins this the first part of this series takes part takes place in the Austrian Tyrol we then move during the Second World War years to Wales to go well, to Guernsey then to Wales and then the third part of the series takes place in the Bernese Oberland in Switzerland and I just love this series. If I'm having a really bad day or I am feeling ill or whatever and I'm not really particularly wanting to read, I will always go back to a chalet school just to sort of perk me up. But yeah, I can remember just devouring these books when I was sort of middle, what about 9, 10, 11, 12. I was absolutely devouring these. Then... I went on to James Herriot. Now, for those of you who live in the UK, my Sunday evenings back in the was it nineteen eighties was all Creatures Great and Small with Christopher Timothy, Robert Hardy, and Peter Davidson. I absolutely adored all Creatures Great and Small, and I mean, the James Herriot books are just so good to read. They are funny. They make you laugh out loud. You can cry. You cry. It's they have everything you I would want in a book about a veterinary practice and the animals they meet, Mrs. Pumphrey and Tricky Woo. You know, so I I was reading these by the end of primary school, which for us over here in the UK is sort of 11, 12. I was reading those and loved them. From there, I kind of progressed to... Excuse me a minute, please. Sorry about that, just a friend phoning. Um, so the next kind of book that I want to talk to you about, or series I want to talk to you about, are the Dirk Pitt series by Clive Cussler. I've read all the other, I've read the other, um, the Fargo series, um, the Numa Files, but Dirk Pitt has always been my favourite character that Clive Cussler wrote. Uh, I just think he, I, what I like about it is you get history, but you also get adventure and 
you know, the characters are just really good characters, fun characters to read that I have enjoyed throughout my life um, since I was a teenager and I really, really enjoy those. Then during my teenage years, my friend from Canada introduced me to Anne of Green Gables. Um, I had never heard of Anne of Green Gables and she sent me a copy, um, this copy in fact, and I read it and I was hooked. I have read all of the Anne series. I've cried a lot at the Anne series, but I have really, really enjoyed it. Love Anne as a character, love the island as, as a character, as a character in itself, the descriptions, etc. are just so, so good that I have devoured this series um, in my, so shall we say, late teenage, early 20s, um, time period. Um, I just devoured those. From there, we kind of went to. Hold on a minute. We went to Rosamund Pilcher. I was introduced to her by my grandmother, by one of my grandmothers, and I really, really enjoyed her books. Winter Solstice is one of my favourites. I probably read this most Christmas times. Uh, I just really love the way that Rosamund Pilcher wrote, her characters and the worlds that she set her stories in were very believable, very true, you know, things that happened again. Just a nice wholesome read that I really, really enjoyed and even to this day I sort of will gravitate towards some Rosamund Pilcher when not when times are tough, but just when I want to go back into these worlds again. Um, and as I say, this one is one of my particular favourites. We then go on to Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Obviously, I was into my adulthood when this came out. And again, I I didn't jump on the bandwagon to begin with. I, I was aware it was around, but I didn't, you know, go, oh, right until one of my best friends went, have you read this? And I'm like, no, you've got to read it, you've got to read it. And I can remember devouring this in a day. Um, and I know a lot of people have a problem with JK Rowling. I don't get involved in the politics, etc., etc. If I like a book, I like a book. If I don't like a book, I don't like a book, irrespective of anything else. But Harry Potter will always be an absolute favourite and I will always, always go back to this and read it. You know, when I really need some major escapism, I will always, always go to Harry Potter. We then go on to Debbie McComer, or Debbie Maycomer, whichever way you want to pronounce it. I, my very first book of hers was 20 Wishes, and I loved that book. And I can remember reading it from the library and then saying to mum and dad, I think I wasn't well, I had glandular fever or something. I said, can you get me another one? And there started my love of Cedar Cove and everything else. Debbie is one of my auto buys. Um, you know, if Debbie is a book coming out, I will buy it because I just really like the way she writes. I like her characters. I like where she sets her books. So yeah, these are, these will, Debbie will always be a love of mine. For... Another kind of adventure, but slightly different. Temp Brennan, Kathy Rice, Temp Brennan series. Oh my goodness! Or it's called Bones on the TV. But I love Temp Brennan. I love the forensic side of things. There's also at times history behind it. I really, really enjoy the forensic science. There's just something about that that really appeals to me, and I like the interplay between Temp and Andrew Ryan it's I just find it fascinating and the way that they solve crime etc so I really do enjoy myself some temp Brennan I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anybody but the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness I've just finished buddy reading this one with with my friend Rebecca from the Colourful Book Nester but I love this world. I love the world of the All Souls. I like the history. I like the characters. I like the fact that we've got witches, we've got vampires, we've got demons, we've got humans. 
and they we all live together in one world as modern day world we also have a lot of history because of Ashmole 782 and then in the second book in this series we go back to the 1500s so Elizabeth I and we get a lot of history from that I just really really like this this series and I like the fact that we have and we've got we've had another book in in the series or in the world and there's hopefully more to come I know that De that Debbie at the, Deborah at the moment is suffering from cancer and is going through chemotherapy treatment but she has said she's trying to keep writing and that's wonderful um so yeah I'm looking forward to more from this world because it's just so so good we then so sort of going with the kind of shall we say witch vibe but just as an author in general Nora Roberts Dance Upon the Air is the first book of the Three Sisters trilogy and I really really enjoy it it's a really good trilogy I love Nora Roberts writing anyway um this one is to do with a woman basically finding herself finding what finding out what she is getting away from an abusive husband and discovering that the world is a big place and that she can make friends where she goes so there's a lot of a lot of goodness in this book and just I really really like Nora Roberts as a writer the other series that I love of hers is the McGregor series because I think Daniel McGregor is such a fabulous character but no Nora Roberts is always virtually always a, a go-to buy for me most of the time um and I really like the way she writes a couple of years ago I heard of this author I hadn't heard of her before and I can't remember how I heard of it but it's Karen Shaler and this one is we Welcome to Christmas Camp I really loved this book and I've read another couple of her books this they she writes really good Christmas stories excuse me and this one is about a Christmas camp and you know a girl who's, who doesn't believe in Christmas bah humbug blah 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 but ends up going to a Christmas camp and realizing that actually there's Christmas is a lovely time of year there for some people it can be very upsetting and distressing but there is magic to be found in Christmas and it was just the way she writes and where her characters are it's just really really enjoyable and I am definitely going to be reading more of her work. Another one that's very that I like her winter series more than her seaside series is Joanne de Mayo. Um, I got this one year for Christmas for my parents as my Christmas Eve book, and it was fantastic. I love the descriptions of this of the snowflakes and everything else that the village of Addison or the town of Addison. And just the descriptions of the houses and how they're decorated and then there's a bit to do with a barn and it turns it becomes like a Christmas shop and the, the decorations that are in it etc oh, just so so good and I just love this winter series and oh I can't say can't say enough about it but it's really really good and then another kind of new to me author within the last couple of years is Rianne Thane. Again, I wasn't aware of her, I think because over here in the UK maybe we don't get a lot of American female authors being talked about. And I can't remember how I learned about Rianne Thane, but I started off in her Haven Point series. And I just loved it. I devoured it. You know, everything. I just kept ordering and ordering. And so I just kept getting them, the books in, you know, as, a, as I needed them. And again, Rianne Thane, anything she writes, I will buy now. Because I just so enjoy her, the way she writes, her characters, the settings. And, oh, so good. So those are kind of some of the books. There are loads of others I could talk about, but... You, this book, this live video would be kind of like at least an hour long, if not longer. But those are some of the books that meant that I've enjoyed, or authors that I've enjoyed more lightly, and series that have seen me from basically babyhood right through to where I am now. And 
without these authors, I don't know where I would be. My reading would not be anywhere near as wide in scope and diversity as it is. I I do still think I could probably branch out even more and I'm maybe going to think this the second half of this year I'll maybe pick up some some more books in other genres just to sort of see if I can maybe arch out even more but I'm really pleased to have these authors and these books in my life um, so please let me know down below what books have sort of shaped your reading since you were a child I'd really like to know are there books that you still keep going back to because they just mean so so much to you or you just love them so so much it would be really really nice to know but I hope you've enjoyed this video friends and until my next one stay safe and happy reading Bye.